Alan Stratton from Mazwood Turns. For my next entry to the Christmas Ornament Wood Turning Challenge, I think I'll use this piece of poplar. Fairly nondescript wood, fairly plain, generally termed as paint grade. And a piece of, again, fairly plain maple. But to do this, I think I'll dress it up a little bit with some alcohol-based dye, red and green. And to apply that, I'll use something that I've found recently. Uh, it's a mouth atomizer. And then I'll, of course, have to size the tenons, but I'll just use an end wrench for this. And then for the body, some spray lacquer. For the finials, just some friction, uh, friction polish. There's still time for you to enter the Christmas Ornament Wood Turning Challenge. Just make a video of you making a, an ornament, upload it, let me know, and I'll add it to the official playlist. If you're a viewer, enjoy anyway. Let's have some fun. I started by drilling two 1 and 1 8 inch diameter holes clear through the ornament body. These holes intersect to form an inner chamber. The trick in roughing this wood now is to not catch the gouge in one of the holes. Out on the larger diameter, I'm mostly cutting air and the holes rotate by the bolt gouge very quickly. Light cuts are required to avoid splintering the wood at the edges of the holes. I did a lot of very light shear scraping. After turning most of the body, I took it over to the drill press and sanded the insides of the holes with a small drum. I also hand sanded the insides of the holes. This is where PSA sandpaper has a fringe benefit, that of sticking to my finger while sanding. I drilled a 3 8 inch hole through the top of the ornament and continued to, through to the bottom of the ornament and into the waist side of the turning block. I figured I could later mount the body on a 3 8 inch dowel to finish up. After sanding and a few more refinements, I parted off the ornament body and glued in a dowel to the waste block and remounted the body for final sanding and finishing. To me, this poplar did not have much going for it in terms of grain or color. I decided to color it with red alcohol-based dye. I don't have an airbrush. I've used them in the past and did not want the hassle of the equipment and the cleanup. I've seen a couple of wood turners use a mouth atomizer. I bought a couple and decided to give it a try. With just a little practice, I could blow on one tube of the atomizer. It uses my stream of air to siphon up the dye and spray it on the wood. Pretty neat. Except be sure to protect any surface nearby that you don't want to become red. It's a bit of a pain to cover all the different surfaces and angles of this ornament from all the different angles. For the tree, I used the end of a maple pen blank. This is mostly skew work. I now enjoy using a skew on smaller diameter pieces. With this itty bitty tree, the problem is the chatter from being so far from the chuck. With the high RPM running on the lathe, I'm hesitant to back up the tree very much with my fingers. They get hot very quickly, and for safety, I don't want to wear a glove. But for the final cuts, I have no choice but to stabilize the wood with a couple of fingers from my left hand while holding the skew with the remaining fingers in my right hand. Fortunately, I don't need a lot of leverage and can hold the skew up near the cutting edge. Here I also used a parting tool. The clearances were just too small otherwise. I'm aiming for a 1 8 inch trunk on this little tree that had to fit in the 1 and 1 8 inch hole in the ornament body. The branches are just little V grooves cut with a skew. By the way, I have so little wood supporting the tree that these had to be very lightly cut. This little tree did not take much work to finish. I took the wood from the lathe, dipped the tree in the bottle of green dye, then wiped off the excess. When it was dry, I sprayed it with a little spray lacquer. I think it's important to size the mounting tenon early on when making the finial, otherwise you risk cutting the tenon too small. Then the best choice is to start over. That's exactly what I had to do this time. I had my finial almost finished and had, to cut, the, had cut the tenon too small. Oh well, cut it off and move on. Since I need a hole for the hanger, after shaping the tip, I cut a small indent to use later to guide the drill bit. After sizing the mounting tenon, I undercut the base just a little bit to offset the curve of the body when I glue them together. Near the end of this finial, I drilled the mounting hold, hole. 
I was thinking that I wanted to keep all the wood that I could, as long as I could, to prevent a break. Then the final sanding and finishing with friction polish. With practice, I've become more comfortable turning my finials. I would not dare compete directly with Cindy Drozda yet, but I'm happy with my progress. I used an end wrench to size my tenons. It's a great idea that I got from Eddie Castellan, but I've also realized that the tolerances on end wrenches are not quite the same as wood turning tolerances. A perfect size according to my end wrench was on the larger side of what I had targeted. So an end wrench just indicates where to be extra careful. I guess an end wrench has to fit over the appropriate sized nut, so okay. I don't turn a finial with a drawn out plan. I start with an idea of the overall length and a couple of elements that have worked for me in the past. Beyond that, I turn by eye to find something that I find pleasing. One general rule is to continue to taper the element's largest diameters as the finial tapers to its end. I don't want a big bead following a small bead. A small bead following a big bead would be okay as long as it is larger than the next element's diameter. One issue with the bottom finial is that the Christmas tree must mount into the top of the finial's tenon. I had to measure the thickness of the bottom of the ornament body and estimate how much to have the tenon protrude. Also, I tooled the end of the tenon just a little bit in case it would show in the ornament body below the tree. With the body, top finial, bottom finial, and Christmas tree, it's time to make a wire hanger to glue it all together. My evaluation of this project, this ornament turned out very nice. Now I'm thinking of other possible variations on this theme. Please join with Carl Jacobson and myself for the Christmas Ornament Wood Turning Challenge. To participate, video your wood turning, upload it, and let me know to add it to the official playlist. If you have a wood turning project you'd like me to try, please let me know. Meanwhile, please like this video and comment below. Please add your tips and ideas for small-scale projects, especially for Christmas.